Hydrographs are records of discharge rates versus time in a stream. Some of the questions associated with hydrographs and this presentation about hydrographs is, are the following. What is a hydrograph? What are the components of flow that are represented in a hydrograph? What are the important parts of a hydrograph? And what landscape characteristics influence a hydrograph shape? Well, a hydrograph is this. It's the uh, volume of water per time versus time past a point on a stream. In the case of Sage Hen Creek in California, this hydrograph that goes from uh, October through September of 2012 illustrates the average daily flow rates past a gauging station on Sage Hen Creek in the upper part of the Truckee River watershed. As one can see, from day to day, the flow rate changes from a maximum in late April uh, of 2012 to a minimum in the days that recently passed in September of 2012. Each point on the hydrograph connected by a line represents then again the rate of flow, the average rate of flow on a given day uh, for this stream at this point. The primary contributions for a hydrograph over the long term include what's called base flow. There are also big spikes in the flow rates that are related to processes called interflow, precipitation on channels, and surface runoff. All three are very important when we talk about changes in the rates of discharge per unit time. Mechanisms that are important, that, are, that uh, show up as elements of the hydrograph include the following. Precipitation, again, precip precipitation that lands on the landscape, as well as precipitation that ends up on the channel surface itself, right in the, in the water. There's a thing called shallow subsurface flow, or over or uh, interflow. There is occasionally flow that runs directly off the land surface when all of the abstractions are filled with water, and the supply rate and precipitation exceeds the amount of not only storage, but also uh, the infiltration rate of the soils. And then there's groundwater flow. Groundwater flow is what we see most of when we look at streams. We're looking at long-term releases from the groundwater reservoir that end up in the stream. Whether this precipitation immediately prior to the time that we're observing the stream or not. Important elements of the hydrograph include the following. First of all, the rising limb, which represents the time from which precipitation may begin, here shown as bars on the left-hand side of this graph, to uh, the peak flow time. There's a time of rise that's associated with a rising limb it gives us a sense of how quickly the, the stream system responds to inputs of precipitation. There's also a uh, lag time associated with the time from which we see the most precipitation or the center of the uh, mass of the precipitation and the peak of storm flow. And then following the storm, we see what's called the recession limb, which means that stream flow returns to some level uh, th that is close to what it might have been prior to the addition of precipitation to the watershed. This is all built on base flow. Base flow is the flow again that originates with groundwater that are from groundwater that sustains the flow for most of the time when we see flow in the stream. When we look at the hydrograph for Hunter Creek, much of what we're seeing right now includes base flow discharges from base flow. If we look for the hydrograph from June through September of 2012, we see a steady decline in the flow rates. The steady decline in the flow rates represents discharge of water from the groundwater reservoir. Very slow, but steady, and sustaining flow in the creek. Interflow is more difficult to see and its response time is somewhat different or in between groundwater flow and the kinds of flow that we see when the supply rate on the land surface 
exceeds the capacity of the land surface to absorb it. It's subsurface flow that moves at shallow depths laterally through the upper soil layers. It reaches the channel very quickly, but not as quickly as overland flow. And it starts very slow, it increases as the storm continues. It's often treated as surface runoff or flow from a shallow impermeable layer. And usually it's minimal from semi-arid basins, for example, the Great Basin. Surface water, when we see increased stream discharge, it's because rainfall usually is greater than the abstractions. The abstractions just represent interferences between the, the uh, soil surface and the uh, precipitation that's falling from the sky. And that could include abstractions or loss of rainfall because of interception by plants, storage and depressions on the soil surface, and then infiltration into soil as well. The hydrograph shape is a function of variations in rainfall intensity across a watershed, as well as basin geomorphology. And bas bas basin geomorphology, as you may remember, is a function of the underlying geology and the material and a number of other physical factors on the surface of the earth that help determine not only the size and shape of a watershed, but also the uh, degree to which drainage occurs quickly or not so quickly following a storm that has an, uh, an application rate or a supply rate that's greater than the watershed can actually absorb. Some of the important characteristics of hydrographs again include base flow, the amount of flow, runoff volume, the total amount that might be due exclusively to the precipitation uh, received in a storm, the peak flow rate is very important, and it's also in, important to understand not only what the peak flow rate might be, but how to determine that. The response rate, which is the change in discharge rates versus time. The time to peak, which indicates the rapidity with which the watershed responds to rainfall and goes to a condition of peak flow. And recession characteristics. We'd like to know how quickly the stream system returns to that more or less uh, steady state, not quite, but steady state associated with purely groundwater discharge. The runoff volume is represented here by the blue area, and it's the area above uh, and beyond the base flow amount that we can expect, and really due to the contributions of uh, the watershed in terms of the total amount of flow that would have come off the watershed because of uh, the exceedance of storage capacity and abstraction in the watershed. Time, uh, the recession characteristics include the time uh, after the time to peak when the stream flow re returns to a, a, a relatively normal condition. When we think about the stream response to precipitation, for most practical work, the only thing we need to know about is surface water and the groundwater. Uh, component. Interflow and surface flow are often undistinguishable unless we apply fairly research oriented techniques uh, associated with teasing apart base flow and interflow. For the most part, when we look at base flow and interflow, uh, they uh, are interflow and surface flow, they're treated as the same thing but still separate than base flow. When we talk about large storms, the most significant component is really surface runoff. The hydrograph shape is influenced by a variety of things. They include characteristics of the storm, uh, distribution and intensity, and then watershed characteristics as well. Watershed characteristics include vegetation distribution, the slopes and the soils, as well as the subsurface materials. Soils and subsurface materials particularly have a lot to do with infiltration rates, and the lower the infiltration rate, the higher the amount of storm uh, water that will come off the watershed as surface runoff. Vegetation, as, our, as I already pointed out, has a lot to do with having water intercepted by leaves and stems uh, before it can hit the soil surface and essentially trapped above the soil surface uh, in what might be thought of as a reservoir that has its only outlet as evaporation back into the atmosphere.
Some of the important influences of vegetation include, and the characteristics include, plant density, vegetation types, and interception rates. In the little illustration off to the right, we can see that there are many different kinds of plants and the infiltration rates change with the types of plants, or the, uh, sorry, the interception rates. The uh, interception rates, for example, for a, uh, an oak tree are somewhere around 30% of the precipitation uh, received from the atmosphere. When we look at lower brush, the uh, interception rates can be much higher. For, for example, on the order of 30 to 40% uh, when we talk about low, uh, low cover that has a heavy leafy structure that intercepts uh, precipitation and again serves as a reservoir for returning precipitation directly into the atmosphere. So we'll talk more about in interception rates and the uh, part that has to do with plants. Let's look for example at the Hunter Creek watershed and two of the, of the uh, uh, two areas there that are are related to or that have, have different kinds of vegetation cover. In the lower excerpted photograph, one of the things that we can see is that we have trees that are interspersed in the snow cover. The uh, trees themselves actually serve as a barrier to the snow and precipitation actually landing on the ground. This is in the upper part of the watershed. When this occurs, the uh, amount of water that's available for overland flow and runoff is significantly diminished relative to the little excerpted photograph on the top. In that photograph, we see uh, a lot of fairly bare area. Uh, and this bare area can be uh, a, a place where, first of all, precipitation lands directly on the soil. But depending on the soil characteristics, uh, uh, we can have, uh, uh, we can have uh, the infiltration rate of the soil uh, overwhelmed by the application rate for either liquid precipitation or by snow melt. Watershed shape has a great deal to do with uh, the eventual shape of a hydrograph. When we look at our typical dendritic watershed that's over here under B, uh, the uh, hydrograph typically has a, a, a very characteristic uh, single rising limb that uh, leads to a peak flow and then a characteristic recession. When we look at other basin shapes, we find that, and that could be a rapid response depending on the type of materials and the types of vegetation that we see in the watershed and actually the size of the watershed itself. When we look at uh, different shape, other different shaped watersheds, we can see that the shape of the watershed, and again that's determined by the underlying uh, geometry, can have a great deal to do with the shape of the hydrograph. So when we look at back at the, uh, the eight classes of watersheds that we have, or uh, drainage systems that we have, we can see that each would very, very likely lead to significant differences in the way the watershed responds to inputs of precipitation. The examples shown in this gray box actually uh, illustrate just a few of the cases that we could have. So let's go back to the questions. What is a hydrograph? A hydrograph is a record of flow rates per unit time. It's a time series. The components of flow include uh, base flow, interflow, precipitation on channels, and surface runoff. The important parts of the hydrograph include the rising limb, the peak, the falling limb, or the recession limb. Some of the other characteristics that are important include the lag time between when precipitation begins and when peak flows occur, uh, the time of rise, and then base flow a very important part of the hydrograph because it's a pond base flow that we add every other component that contributes to the shape of a hydrograph. The landscape characteristics that contribute to or that influence the hydrograph shape include first of all the uh, geometry of the um, watershed itself and geometry of the watershed has to do with everything from uh, vegetation types and steepnesses 
to uh, soils, materials, and geology that underlie the, uh, the watershed itself. As I pointed out, uh, different classes of watersheds have then different characteristic shapes. Typically, a dendritic system might have the classic watershed shape that we're used to seeing, which is a uh, gradual recession in flow over time, followed by response to a precipitation event that is character characteristically a single event that leads to a, a peak flow, and not only a, a peak flow, but then also to a very characteristic recession curve that follows the peak flow.